There's no one single way of proving um, that someone has a beneficial interest in a property. Um, if the person is on the legal title, so they're named on the title deeds, um, then it should be straightforward because the law assumes that if you're the legal owner and your name's on the legal title, you also have a beneficial interest in the property. But if you're not on the legal title, you might still have a beneficial interest. If there's a declaration of trust, um, which is a formal legal document setting out property and financial arrangements between co-owners, um, and the declaration of trust says that uh, you have a beneficial interest, or in other words, that you're entitled to a share of the sale proceeds once a property is sold, um, then that's proof um, that you have a beneficial interest. The declaration of trust can only be set aside in very rare circumstances, such as when duress or undue influence is proved. So if there's a declaration of trust saying you have a beneficial interest, um, then that, that's more or less proven. But even if there isn't a declaration of trust, it is possible for a beneficial interest in property um, to arise without any written documentation at all. It's called a common intention constructive trust. Where that arises, the legal owner has promised you, um, or there's been some kind of common intention between you, um, that you will have a beneficial interest. And then you rely on that promise or that arrangement to your detriment. A classic example is when someone contributes a sum of money towards a deposit on a property on, you know, on the promise that they will then have a beneficial interest in the property, or if someone pays for an extension to the property. You don't need to have any written paperwork saying that you're to have a beneficial interest, but as long as you've relied on a promise and you've suffered some kind of detriment, financial or otherwise, you have a potential claim for a beneficial interest.